So the third method for solving a system is called solving by addition. You can also call it solving by elimination. And I do use both of those words whenever I want you to solve by this method. I don't really ever use linear combinations, although it, you might see it in your textbook or something like that. So just to introduce this particular method, let's just add these two equations together. If we do, don't these two go to zero? 6y minus 6y is zero. So we'll have x plus 2x is equal to 3 plus 9. Well, I can solve that for x by dividing by 3. And I get x equals 4. I already know x. That's pretty cool. <laughs> now I can just substitute that back in and find y. I think the first equation might be the easiest. So let's take this 4 and put it right there for x. So we have 4 plus 6y equals 3. Subtract 4. 6y is equal to negative 1. Divide by 6. So y is equal to negative 1 sixth. The solution to this system is 4 negative 1 sixth. Now remember, a solution to a system is a point on a graph. It's where the two lines intersect. So if you do not write it as an ordered pair, meaning x comma y with parentheses around it, then you just have two numbers that don't really mean anything. So you must write them as an ordered pair. And of course, you can substitute these back in and check them if you like. I highly recommend that on a test though. So let's look at the next example. If we were to add those together, would anything nice happen? Meaning, like this one, this, the six y's went away, right? Would that happen over here? We would have a five x and a two y and an eight. That doesn't help us at all. So in a case like that, we need to kind of make something happen for us. So what if I took this entire equation and I multiplied it by three on both sides? And remember, as long as you do the same thing on both sides, you're still doing legal operations, right? So we can distribute this three. We'll end up with nine X minus three Y equals 21. Bring this one over. 2x plus 3y equals 1. Now, does something nice happen? The y's go away, right? So 9x plus 2x is 11x. 21 plus 1 is 22. Divide both sides by 11, and we get x is equal to 2. So all we did was multiply an equation by some number. As long as you do it to both sides, it's still okay to do that because you haven't changed it at all. You just made the numbers bigger, but those mean the same equation, okay? So we haven't really changed it. We just put it in a form that helps us solve the system. All right, so how do we solve for our y now? We could take this two and substitute it back into either equation. Maybe we'll put it in the first one since y is almost by itself. So we have three times two minus y equals seven. Three times two is six. So check six, negative y is equal to one, divide by negative one, so y is equal to negative one. Our solution is the point to negative one. So what if we have a problem like this one? where we can't just multiply one equation by some number to make one of the variables disappear. Well, in a case like that, we can multiply them both by something. Remember, as long as you do the same thing to both sides, it's okay. You can either make the x's go away or you can make the y's go away. It really doesn't matter. So since we've been making the y's go away everywhere else, let's make the x's go away. To make the x's go away, these two numbers, the three and the four, have to be the same number with opposite signs. So what if I were to multiply this one by a negative four? And what if I were to multiply this one by a three? What happens? Negative four times three x is negative 12x. 
negative 4 times negative 2y is positive 8y, and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Here we have 3 times 4x is 12x, 3 times negative 3y is negative 9y, 3 times 7 is 21. Now we can add them together. These go away. 8 minus 9 would be negative 1y. Negative 20 plus 21 is a positive 1. Divide both sides by negative 1, so we get y equals negative 1. So how did we do this again? Remember, we want to choose some numbers to multiply by so that our coefficients are opposites. In this case, they're both 12, but one's negative and one's positive. Okay, so now we know y. We need to find x. Doesn't matter which one you use. Maybe I'll just use the one with the smaller numbers. So I'll put it back into the first equation. So we have 3x minus 2 times negative 1 is equal to 5. Well, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. We subtract 2 from both sides. So 3x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to 1. Our solution, remember, is x, y. So it's 1, negative, 1. Sorry about that. 